Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video, we started solving this circuit right here by using mesh analysis. And we ended up with just a two by two, basically two equations, two unknown kind of uh, a set of equations, which we're now trying to solve using determinants. So first we're going to solve this right here, the determinant of this, D, is going to be equal to the product of those two, which is essentially eight plus J8, multiplied times four minus J4, and then we subtract from that the product of these two, which is J2 multiplied times J2. So that's our determinant. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 8 times 4, that's 32. 8 times this is minus J32. This times this is plus J32, so the J32s cancel out. And this times this is a minus J squared times 32. But the J squared is a negative 1, minus times the minus is plus. So end up with plus 32. And then here we have j2 times j2, which is j squared 4, which is minus 4 times a minus, which is plus 4. Notice that these two cancel out. 32 plus 32 is 64 plus 4, which is equal to 68. So our determinant is equal to 68. So next we need to solve for d1. d1 is going to be equal to the determinant, but with the first column replaced by these two values. So we end up with j50 and a minus J30 here instead of these two terms. And then here we have J2 and we have four minus J4. And let's go ahead and continue solving that one up here. So we end up with D1 is equal to the product of those two cross terms. So that would be equal to J50 multiply the times four minus J4 minus the product of those two terms which is a J2 times a minus J30. Okay, multiplying these out, we get J200. This times this gives you minus J squared, that's a plus one, times five times four, which is plus 200. And then over here we have minus J, so J2 times a minus that, that's J squared times a minus, that's plus one, times 60 times a minus, that would be minus 60. Wow, let's do that one again just to make sure. So we have a J2 times a J30, that's a, that's a J squared 60. J squared is negative 1 times negative is positive times 1 negative is negative again. So that means that we end up with 140 plus J200. And finally we need D3, oh not D3 but D2, I'm getting ahead of myself, D2, which is equal to the matrix and go ahead and put our little brackets on it like this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these two first terms. We have 8 plus J8 and J2. And now we're going to replace these two by those two. So I end up with J50 and a minus J30. So this is equal to 8 plus J8 multiplied times a minus J30. So we multiply these two terms minus the product of these two, which is J2 times J50. All right, so this is equal to eight times this, that gives me minus J240. This times this, J times J is a minus one, times a minus is plus one times 240, so that plus 240. And this times this, that's a minus one, times a minus is plus one, so plus 100. So in this case, that ends up being 340, minus J240. So there's my D3. So now since we're going to have to solve these equations right here, I think we can go ahead and do that. So then we, we know that I keep saying D3, but I really mean D2. So don't mind that, that's a D2. So I1 is equal to D1 divided by the determinant D, which is equal to D1 it's right here, so we have 140 plus J200 divided by D, which is 68. So that gives us, and of course now we're going to need a calculator. So 140 divided by 68, which is equal to 2.056, no, 2.059. So 2.059 and 200 divided by 68 is 
plus J2941. So 2.941. So make sure we have the decimal places in there. All right. All right, so we also can change this into the format of magnitude and phase angle. So let's do that. So the magnitude will be, take this squared plus, uh, let's see here, we take 2.059, we square that, plus 2.941, and we square that, take the square root, and we end up at 3.59, so this would be equal to 3.59 with a phase angle of 2.941 divided by 2.059, Five nine. Take the inverse tangent of that, and the phase angle. Oh, I have. I don't have it in the right mode. So let's go uh, mode four. Mode four. Let's try that again. So now it should be in degrees. So we have two point nine four one divided by two point zero five nine, and take the inverse tangent of that. It gives me fifty five degrees. So this is I one current I1 in mesh 1. So now we, let's go for I2. That would be D2 divided by D. And D2 in this case was right here. That would be 340 minus J240 divided by D, the determinant, which is 68. So we end up at 340 divided by 68, which is exactly 5, minus J240 divided by 68, which is 3.529. 3.529 so when we go ahead and convert that to magnitude and uh, phase angle so we square that uh, plus 25 take the square root of that we get 6.12 6.12 with a phase angle of 3.529 divided by 5 and take the inverse tangent of minus 35 minus 35.214. So that is equal to I2. Now, the real question is, we're trying to find I right here. And I is in the opposite direction from I2. So what we can say then is finally, we can say that I is equal to the negative of I2. Well, that means that this is equal to negative 6.12 with a phase angle of minus 35.214 degrees. Or we can take this negative and add 180 degrees to that. So we take the minus 35 plus 180. That puts us at equal to 6.12 with a phase angle of a positive 144.79 degrees. And that would then be ultimately the current that we're looking for, I, 6.12, with a phase angle of 144.79 degrees. And that is how it's done. Now let's see if it's correct. Yep, that is correct. It was painful. <laughs>